What's going on YouTube Chamber Productions coming back at you with another video review and today I am doing a comparison video. I am comparing the Nerf Zombie Strike Clip Fury to the Zuru Adventure Force Hyperspin. Starting off with the Nerf Zombie Strike Flip Fury, the Flip Fury is a two cylinder blaster, each cylinder holding six darts and the max capacity of the overall blaster is 12 darts and it does come with 12 Zombie Strike darts, which are basically just green elite darts. But going over the look of the blaster, starting off here at the grip, the grip is styled after a wood grip, so it does have a wood texture to it and has um, it does have a bandage wrapped around the grip and the grip is pretty comfortable, I like the grip. It does have a total of three sling mounts, one here at the front which in my opinion is sort of a makeshift sling mount but you can still use it as a sling mount and then you got one here on the bottom of the grip and then one on the priming handle here on the back which I don't really understand because if you put a sling on this and start running around it's going to make a lot of noise and I don't think that's too healthy for the blaster um, I wouldn't do that I would just put it on the um, sling mount that's on the grip but it is there nonetheless it does have a tactical rail here on the top so you can put nerf scopes other nerf attachments on the top here um, it does have the flip fury logo written in black here but then on the back side it the paint is lacking it doesn't have the nerf logo painted it doesn't have the zombie strike logo that it has right here painted um, a lot of the paint that's highlighted here on this side isn't highlighted here on the other side Overall, the looks and the design of the blaster is pretty cool. Let's move on to the Hyperspin. Now taking a look at the Zuru Adventure Force Hyperspin. The Hyperspin, just like the Flip Fury, is a two-cylinder blaster, each cylinder holding six darts, which adds up to a max capacity of 12 darts. Going over the looks of the blaster, the blaster definitely has a mechanical look and feel to it due to all the mechanical molded in detail. Starting off here at the grip, the grip is quite comfortable. I like the grip. Um, I really like the grip. It's really comfortable in hand. Um, yeah, I like the grip. On the bottom of the grip here, we have a sling mount, which is rather, um, it's rather small, but you can, I'd imagine, fit a small or a thin piece of rope through the sling mount right there on the back. On the top of the blaster here, we do have a um, tactical rail here on top. I did put a Nerf scope on top. I had to clip it on, but after a little bit of shaking, it didn't really stick on. It just fell right off. So um, you can not put a nerf attachment on this, it's just not going to stay on the best, but it does make up for that with a pair of iron sights, which is really nice. I really do appreciate that. Um, overall, the looks and the design of the blaster is pretty good. There are a couple things I do want to talk about, starting off with the grip of the blaster here. It is a separate piece from the rest of the blaster itself, and the way they made it is they simply um, clamp these two halves together and in doing so having it a separate um, piece from the blaster it does have a little bit of give in the handle itself um, in the grip on the back here and you'll be able to hear this so it does have a little bit of give on the um, grip of the blaster itself which you know it's just how it's designed but it's not a huge issue it's not like it's going to break or anything because no one's going to put pressure on that exact spot um your hands distributing the pressure throughout the entire grip um it does have a little bit of a wiggle at the where the um hand guard meets the uh, blaster itself so there's a little bit of wiggle there and then uh, right here on this front half of the blaster there is a little bit of wiggle room between it and the cylinders and you'll be able to see that little bit of wiggle room but outside of that i have no issues with the blaster whatsoever um it's a pretty good blaster like i said i have no issues with it outside of those two issues this is a really good blaster let's go over the functionality of the flip fury and the hyperspin going over the functionality of the flip fury to load it you simply take a dart and it has these two cut out pieces of the frame here you simply take the dart and you line that up with the cylinder using these little cut out pieces which I do appreciate because it makes it easier to load the dart than where if you had it like this where you have to sort of angle the dart and put it in like that so I do appreciate that little cutout piece it really does help with just being able to slide the dart into the chamber after that you simply pull the bottom trigger and that will rotate the cylinders automatically for you and then you simply pull back on the priming handle here and then it does have a spring return so you can just let go and it will return to the blaster after that you simply pull the trigger and you shoot the dart let's go over the functionality of the hyperspin 
Going over the functionality of the hyperspin to load it, you simply load the bottom cylinder just like the Flip Fury. One thing I do like about the hyperspin is that there is nothing restricting the loading process of the bottom cylinder. Um, you can put in four darts um, and then rotate and then put in the last two. And then just like the Flip Fury, you simply pull on this bottom trigger here, which will then release the cylinders. There is no mechanism rotating it automatically. You do have to manually rotate the cylinders into place. And then after that, you pull back on the orange priming handle, which will then rotate the top cylinder. And then it does have a spring return. So you just pull back and then it has a spring return to the blaster. And then you simply pull the trigger and fire the dart. Let's see how these two blasters perform. In the top cylinder here, there are Nerf Zombie Strike darts, and on the bottom cylinder, Nerf AccuStrike darts. Alright, for the hyperspin, I am using the darts that come with the hyperspin itself. In the top cylinder here, I have standard Nerf Elite darts, and in the bottom cylinder, Nerf AccuStrike darts. So overall, what are my official thoughts and opinions about the Flip Fury and the Hyperspin? They're both really good blasters, but before I can make a recommendation, we have to take a look at a few things first, starting off at the price point. The Hyperspin retails at 10 US dollars and the Flip Fury retails at 20 US dollars. What you're paying for with the Hyperspin is basically the Flip Fury without the Nerf logo and or the official Nerf brand and the gimmick that rotates the barrels or the cylinders automatically for you. With the Flip Fury, you're paying an extra 10 US dollars for the Hyperspin with the uh, 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 added feature of the cylinders rotating automatically and the Nerf brand logo. And to be quite honest, they're both really good blasters like I said, but me personally, I like the Hyperspin a little bit better. Um, it just works a little bit better for me in my opinion. Uh, I'm completely fine with having to rotate the cylinders manually. Um, it doesn't work every time, but once you get the hang of it, it is pretty easy to do. Um, another thing I kind of like about the Hyperspin a little bit better than the Flip Fury is the priming mechanism. Whenever you prime it, it automatically rotates the cylinder on the top for you. You do have to put in the extra work, so this does have a heavier draw weight in the primer than the Flip Fury itself, because I'll show you this real quick. The uh, Flip Fury, whenever you prime it, the cylinder doesn't rotate. It's after you pull the trigger, that the cylinder rotates onto the next dart. So this is kind of unique. Um, it's unique. I, I don't really know of any other blasters that utilize this, um, this kind of uh, mechanism. So overall, when it comes down to giving my final recommendation, I can't really recommend one blaster over the other. The Flip Fury is a really good blaster. The Hyperspin is a really good blaster. It just depends on what you, the buyer, is looking for. If you like the features of the Flip Fury, such as the automatic cylinder change, then this is your blaster. The Hyperspin is basically the Flip Fury just without the added bonus of the Nerf brand logo and the automatic mechanism in the cylinder rotation. But outside of that, they're practically the same blasters except for cosmetic differences. Um, obviously this has, um, it doesn't have a, a mechanical feel like this one does because this blaster has all this mechanical molded in detail. But aside from cosmetics, they're pretty much the same blaster. Again, they do have a similar um, sort of design, but in terms of like the cosmetics and the details of the blasters, they are a little bit different. But outside of that, there's not a whole lot different about them. I recommend them both. They're both good blasters. It just depends on what you, the buyer, is looking for.
Well, that's all from me. I hope you all enjoyed. If so, be sure to leave a like, comment what you think of the Flip Fury and the Hyperspin in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all from me, Champion Productions, signing off.